Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Thursday, September 10th. Today we will have warmer and drier conditions along with decreased winds across the Great Basin and still some light showers over eastern areas with higher elevation snowfall and cold temperatures behind the cold front. On Friday we will see drier conditions across the Great Basin but northwest winds will increase with gusts 20 to 30 miles per hour and drier conditions over parts of southern Idaho into northern Utah. So these northwest winds will definitely be increasing on our large fires across the northern half of the Great Basin as we go into Friday. Looking at our smoke forecast for later today, we still have generally some easterly winds which will keep some of our heavier smoke to the west and north outside of the Great Basin. However, downwind of our large fires in Idaho and across Utah, certainly there will be some concerns with the air quality and also the visibility, also along parts of far western areas of the basin. Over the last 24 hours, we have seen some generally light showers over eastern Utah with drier conditions elsewhere. Yesterday, Great Basin fire activity was light with nine new fires reported for 144 acres. However, we did have over 18,000 acres of new growth on our large fires, which was largely attributed to the Woodhead fire up in Idaho. Over the last seven days, we've seen precipitation obviously over the eastern areas of the Great Basin associated with the recent cold front. However, some of these heavier areas of wetting range you can see were generally spottier and confined to some of the higher terrain. So not all areas saw widespread wetting rain. However, we did have some higher elevation snowfall. Precipitation has been generally below normal across the Great Basin. We did have a few pockets up north with that cold front that pushed it to above normal for the last two weeks. ERCs have certainly dropped over eastern areas of the Great Basin where we saw several days of higher humidity and some shower activity. So we do have reduced fire danger in our far east, but still very critical conditions anywhere further north across Idaho into western Utah and Nevada. We are even seeing some spots across central Idaho where ERCs are above the 97th percentile. So very critical for this time of year and that is evident based on our large fire activity and recent fire growth. Looking at our current fuel conditions, these are charts of 1,000 hour fuel moisture, just showing how critical 1,000 hour fuel moistures are indicative of our timber fuels over Idaho and still over eastern Utah. Even in areas that have seen higher humidity and some showers, 1,000 hour fuel moisture is a lot slower to respond, so we are seeing that response, but again, still very dry for the time of year. Looking at our 100 hour fuel moisture, you can see still critical over western areas and you are seeing that moderating effect over eastern areas. However, we will see warmer and drier conditions here coming up over the next few days, which will again start to dry the area out. Our satellite image from this morning shows the area of low pressure still dominating in the Four Corners region, continuing with that higher humidity air along with showers over eastern Utah and cooler temperatures. Otherwise, high pressure off the west coast will build eastward, and this will allow our temperatures to increase with drier conditions and also push some of that smoke back into the Great Basin as we move later in the week and this weekend. For later today, again, that area of low pressure still across the Four Corners area with showers and higher humidity in the east. So again, that will lower our fire potential in those regions temporarily. Otherwise, moderate fire potential or high exist across the rest of the Great Basin. Winds will decrease today. We still could see some breezy winds up across parts of western Wyoming into far northern Utah with gusts in the mid-20s and also just more moderate winds continuing across Idaho which will continue to impact our fires. Relative humidity in the single digits to low teens over the western half of the region and still above 20 or 30 percent over much of the eastern two-thirds of Utah. On Friday, we will see that area of low pressure exit with warmer and drier conditions across the Great Basin and that area of high pressure dominating off the West Coast. So we will start to see our fuels dry out over eastern areas and remain critically dry elsewhere. On Friday, also northwest winds will start to increase over the northern half of the basin. So again, this will affect our large fires in northern Utah and also our fires in Idaho. It will be a change of wind direction and an increase in speed. Relative humidity will remain in the single digits across Nevada and drop into the teens elsewhere. On Saturday, that ridge starts to move overhead, so continued warming and drying conditions across the Great Basin. However, we will see lighter winds on Saturday, even for our fires up across Idaho. But dry conditions with poor to moderate overnight recoveries and relative humidity in the single digits to low teens. The only precipitation over the next few days will occur across eastern Utah. As we move into later in the weekend and early next week, we'll be watching an area of low pressure off the west coast 
that will likely allow some winds to start increasing along the Sierra front on Sunday. So a little bit stronger Zephyr wind than what they're normally used to along the Sierra front. There are some high risk in Northern California bordering us to our west. We may have to put some high risk over parts of the Sierra front into Northwest Nevada starting Sunday or Monday. However, otherwise dry and warm conditions are expected. I will say the models are having a real hard time handling this cold front, which is not abnormal for the time of year. When we are in this transition season from fall, summer to fall, we tend to see a little bit more poor confidence in the models. On Monday, that front potentially gets a little bit further closer, so we will likely see those winds increase further on Monday over parts of northwest Nevada. We're still waiting to issue some high risk just to get a little bit higher confidence with the model solutions. We also could see these winds further north up into Idaho on Monday, and that would be significant for our large fires. On Tuesday, if that low starts to dig further down the coast, we'll continue with that breezy flow over western and northwest Nevada up into Idaho with dry conditions. So we'll be watching Tuesday as well for some stronger winds. And then on Wednesday, if that front does drop further south, we'll be looking at gustier winds across the Great Basin, but we could actually see some moisture potentially move into far western areas. Seven day total precip, not a whole lot different than the three day. You can start to see in the northwest and northern California as that front drops south, we might start to see some moisture in some much needed areas, and this may clip central Idaho as well. So we'll continue to monitor that for the Great Basin for any moisture that potentially moves in. The 8 to 14 day outlook taking us from September 17th through the 23rd shows warm and dry conditions, but we will continue to have cold fronts move through the area every four to seven days or so now that that door has opened with the most recent cold front. So we are looking at potentially windier conditions and we will continue to monitor any moisture. That concludes our webcast for today. Check back tomorrow for the latest updates.